If you ask an adult human what their favorite bike trick is, 99 out of 100 will name one of these four classics. Number four, the spike jump 180 degrees. Number three, the Sputnik grab presented by Phoenix Beast Performance Energy Drink. Flughafen. And number one, the kickflip. But my favorite bike trick is something more modest. This trick is a variant of this classic dismount technique, which I find to be very elegant. But instead of getting off the bike, I'll just stay on that pedal and kind of rock it back and forth, moving the bike forward. The reason this works, of course, is that the pedal is hooked up via a chain to these sprockets on the wheel. And when you pedal forward, the wheel turns forward. But importantly, if you pedal backwards, the wheel doesn't turn backwards. And that's really the same thing as leaving the pedal still while the wheel does its thing. This is what allows you to coast or do really cool tricks. The mechanism that lets you do this is hiding behind those sprockets and it's called the free wheel. This has nothing to do with the chain or anything else on the bike. And so actually what I wanna do is I wanna get rid of all of the unnecessary pieces on the bike to create a bike that can only do this one trick. Specifically, I wanna take the pedal and I wanna mount it right on the back wheel, just connect it directly. Then I can step on the pedal and move forward a little bit. Imagine the wheel turns when I push down, but not when I come back up. I'll have to do a kind of jumping in order to make that work. And since this vehicle will only have one pedal, I'm not gonna be able to balance on it on that one pedal, so I'm gonna keep part of the frame here as something to kind of hold on to, and that might give me a chance to steer it as well. That'll be all we need from the bike. So we can take all the other parts, like the front wheel and most of the frame, and some cables, uh, the brakes, and the seat, uh, whatever else, um, and just throw those in the trash and set fire to them. I, I'm just kidding. Obviously, I'm going to keep all that crap in my basement um, for a decade until I find some use for a cut-up bike. I was informed that that last drawing is an insufficient explanation of the idea, so here's another view. I'll be holding the bike at an angle uh, with one foot on the pedal, the rest of my body hovering to balance the bike, and then my hand to control the angle of the bike, and hopefully riding off into the sunset that way. Also, bicycle isn't the right name for this anymore. We can call it a uni-bicycle to emphasize the fact that it only has one pedal. And we could shorten that to uni-bicycle, or even shorten that further to uni-bike, or uke, or just ukulele. This is the bike that I'm going to sacrifice or improve. It's not in great shape. I mean, it's got this really nice seat with that racing stripe. And while I have good tread depth here, a fair number of insects have taken up residence and started families on the tires, which is gross. Not to mention the indignity of being named after a really boring piece of Microsoft productivity software, Outlook Express. And this bike technically belongs to my brother, so that's good. Realization. Now, I'd really like to step on the one pedal that this bike will have with my right foot, since that's my favorite foot. But I also need that pedal to be on the same side as these sprockets, because I'm going to mount it directly to them. Now, I think the result of this is that when I pedal, the bike is actually going to go backwards. Hmm. Anyway, let's take the bike apart, and first things first, this stupid thing. I don't even know why this exists, and you certainly don't need tools to get it off. You just touch it, and there it goes. And now let's get rid of other magical devices like this derailleur, which I still don't understand. Let's give that back to Harry Potter. And get the wheel off. Oh yeah, the brakes. Okay, now really the wheel off. Then a little puzzle. Topology. Sorry, folks, I'd like to topologize in advance for this terrible pun. But seriously, there is something funny going on with the chain. As it connects from the pedal's sprockets to the wheel's sprockets, it goes behind this part of the frame and in front of these two parts of the frame. So it's really linked into the frame, and it can't come out unless we cut one of them or disassemble the chain. This aspect of the bike's design is secretly brilliant, to be honest, because as I move the pedal and try to attach it directly to the wheel, I'm going to run into a problem where I want it to be simultaneously in front of 
and behind this green frame. So this topology is no accident. More on that in a bit. For now, we need to figure out how to get that chain off, so welcome to Tom Seven's Pro Looking Things Up on the Internet. I don't want to watch a video. Those are boring. Oh, Lance Armstrong. He's a good guy. All right, that's a chain. That looks good. But drilling? Well, look, if it involves power tools, I've got a better idea. Then I took this thing off and found that nut to be purely decorative. Apparently you're supposed to have some kind of special tool for this, but I was able to get it off with some crotch support and a lot of crowbar. Okay. But I had to buy a special tool to get the cassette off. As we discussed, that thing spins freely in one direction, and that's the direction you would need to turn it to get it off, and in fact gets tighter as you pedal. Even with the tool, it's a real Shimano a mano affair. But now that's done, we have the parts we need. So let's take some measurements and take this up to CAD so we can solve that topology puzzle. I must admit that I find CAD extremely relaxing, but don't be fooled by the precision here. We'll see when we get to my sloppy ass welding that those were hours of CAD wasted. But it is a good way to show visually some of the ideas I had for mounting this thing together. These are the components as they'd normally be assembled on the wheel. This is the free wheel and the cassette, and then this interloper. Now it would be nice if I could just merge this in here like so, but that has two problems. One, there's not nearly enough space to do it. Second of all, I'm going to run into this kind of collision as I move the pedal, and won't be able to get a full stroke all the way around. Also, as we discussed before, if I use my right foot in this configuration, the bike will go backwards. I could fix this if I mounted the freewheel in reverse, but the only way I could think of to do this was to take this tool that I bought to remove the freewheel, and then slot it into the freewheel and the cassette, and mount that whole thing backwards using the tool onto the wheel. Among other issues, the fit is even more impossible than the previous idea, and we would still have the collision problem. Alternately, though the axle is usually attached to the frame and spins freely within the wheel, we could reverse that and have the axle spin freely within the frame and attach to the wheel as well as the pedal. We could get some one-way rotation action by using the free wheel attached to the frame instead of the wheel, but this won't work because the wheel will always move with the pedal and so I won't be able to coast, unless I'm doing something like using the frame as a ski and holding onto the wheel, which isn't the purpose of this video, but might be good for a future Kickstarter. But let's just keep it simple for now. I'm going to weld three steel bars between the cassette and the pedal like this. And owing to our topology problem, I won't be able to make a full revolution of the pedal because these bars will hit the frame. But I don't need to do that because this writing technique just involves jumping. The bike will still go backwards unless I can do something like, say, reverse gravity so that the wheel is contacting the ceiling instead of the ground. Or I could always just ride it with my left foot. The cassette is steel, which is suitable for welding, but it has a bit of a weird surface. So I cut out channels for the bars to fit into. Dremel makes really nice looking sparks, doesn't it? Like sparklers. And now I just need to weld these guys in here so that they stay put. Not like that. And then you just give it one blow and it's cool to the touch. I also cut the bicycle apart into its useful back triangle and its useless front half. Hauptbahnhof. <clears throat> I cleaned this thing off with the grinder and a loofah and then decided that I should reinforce this. 
since my whole body weight's gonna be on it. Finally, I can put all these pieces together. I know these welds look just awful, by the way. Uh, that's partly because I'm terrible at welding, as I admit. But it is flux core, which is sort of inherently messy. And by the way, if you're feeling bored of this welding footage, I'll have you know that I shot hours and hours of all parts of this project, including a lengthy segment on deburring, which I'm sparing you. So bear with me. We're almost done here. I foolishly attached this one-way screw-on thing without planning for the nuts that are supposed to be on that rod. And now they won't fit, so I'm just going to weld this whole thing too. Fire means it's working. Okay, looking good. I just need to top off the pressure here because, as you know, 10,000 PSI overinflated is safer than 0.1 pounds under. Aw oh, man, I can't wait to ride this cool ass bike. Oh. So the static balancing theory is more or less sound ish. But to get anywhere on it is beyond my skills. Okay. Though, to be fair, this did match the simulation almost exactly. So next I upcycled a piece of the bike in order to give myself a better grip. Which helps a little bit. Now I'm up to about, say, 200 milliseconds of riding time before I fall. Now that was not my work that failed there. That was this under-engineered pedal popping off. The new crossbar stabbed me in the collar, so it's a lucky thing I didn't go with the original design, which called for a pair of bejeweled swords. It seems that not everyone on the internet can be trusted. I do need something to stand on, though, so here I am putting the metal to the pedal. That could be worse. With either pedal, I've been having this forward back motion problem, so I wonder if there's some way I could stabilize the whole thing. Like maybe if I had a tandem configuration of uni bicycles, then it wouldn't be able to roll forwards and back. Wait, I think I just found a use for that other half of a bike that I almost got rid of. Hey, lesson learned, right? Never throw anything away. Since this thing has two wheels, it's probably more appropriate to call it a duo uni bicycle. But let's see if she spins. No, Tom. I mean, can it be ridden? Oh. <laughs> Right. The answer is, uh, mm, no comment. But I kept practicing, even through the rain. I blame this on the fact that I have to use my left foot, because I couldn't reverse gravity. But I dare say that right here, I'm really riding it. That's a world record. Cue the sunset. <laughs> 